Hey guys, it's Angel here at the Chicken Coop and I just wanted to talk to y'all about getting ready for your gardens. Now, this is just always um, something that I struggle with is getting my garden organized, my seeds organized, where I'm going to plant what, and there's always some fine tweaking that I do when I actually plant. But I'm getting better and better. I will say, you know, at the at the first, when I first started doing this, you know, I was not very good at it. I didn't, you know, I knew I needed to rotate things, but it just seemed like it was a lot of, you know, I would move stuff there and then, no, I can't plant that there. I got to plant it over here. And so it was just very, uh, it was hard for me. It was a struggle for me to get that figured out. But I, one of the things that for me, my personality is I have to kind of have things in order, in some kind of organization, in some sort of way before that I can can work and before I can create and before I can do anything. If I don't, I'm just kind of, it, it just throws me for a loop. So, uh, through the years, I've done different things about how to organize my seeds and I've, I've tried to have kind of like a little journal about my garden. So, I'm going to cover uh, several of those topics today with this video, okay? So, first of all, my, my seeds. I've done different ways, and it seems like, you know, but the more seeds I get, the more I have to kind of redo and revamp that system. So, just know that your system, whatever you do, the more you get into this, the more seeds you get, the more seeds people give you, that you might have to tweak this, and you might have to be... Uh, a little forgiving of yourself to, to come up with a different system. You know, just because you do it that one way doesn't mean you're locked in to do it that way every year. And this year, um, I had so many flower seeds and vegetable seeds that, number one, that's what I did. I went through and separated out all my seeds into flowers and vegetables. And I had these um, Christmas tins, but like Christmas cookies came in. All in here, that's all I did. I sat at, uh, at TV one night and went through my vegetables. and I mean, went through my seeds and separated them out and then put made a, a, a sign for one tin that said vegetable seeds and one tin that, made, that said flower seeds. That's all I did. Did that one night, okay. Then last night, I went through my seeds and I kind of, I made a list of all the seeds I had. And then I went through on my list and I put like if it was something, because here in Texas, uh, you can have a spring garden and you can have a fall garden, but there's some things that, and especially for me, because I have a limited space, that uh, I can grow in the fall and I can grow in the spring, but I have I will have more room in the fall to grow those things than I do in the summertime when I have to grow tomatoes and squash and zucchini and things like that. So for me, even though there are spring and a fall uh, item or seed or plant, uh, Sometimes I just move it into the fall because that's when I'm going to plant it, okay? So, because in Texas, things you can grow things really nice in the early spring when it's kind of cool, but then it's going to turn hot, and it's going to turn hot quick, and those things usually will bolt, and um, they won't do very good, okay? They'll just go to seed. So, what I did is I went through this, this big jumble of seeds and you can see I save seeds and I buy seeds and so I just went through and so first I made that list of all the seeds I had just on a scratch piece of paper then I went through and put if it was a summer or a fall uh what I, that I'm going to consider a spring or a fall uh plant uh seed and once I did that uh then I actually separated. I made, you know, kind of had that little working list. And then I went to my journal that I keep up with my garden things. And here I just have a little little notebook that has my journal, garden journal in here. And I put vegetable seeds, spring 2020. And I made a list of things that I want to try to plant early. And then um, some things that I'm going to plant in the fall. So, um, so like here, 
if you can read this. Uh, early spring, I have Swiss chard, lettuce, peas, spinach, parsley, onions. And then I also went through and said, you know, when can you plant those? January to April, January to February, February to May, March through uh, May, and then in January are onions. And then I have made a list. These are the spring things that I can plant. And these are things that I can direct sow. So cucumbers, zucchini, squash, blue lake beans, and then I just kind of threw in some lupus seeds in there. So, and then all these are, you know, March to some sort of time between March and September. And then I picked out the plants that I kind of, you have to, you know, make starts from that you can't direct sow. And these are mostly like my peppers and my tomato plants. And then um, later on, uh, for a little bit later in the summer, my cantaloupe, my pumpkins, uh, watermelon, honeydew, and peas, and okra is even later because they really like the heat. So I kind of just made this working list. And this will help me organize as to when I, you know, what seeds do I need to be working on next? Because if you'll kind of get you know, bog down of when, when do I need to do this? And you'll get it all confused. And so that's kind of one of the things that I did to try to help me is to, to figure out, you know, what do I need to work on first? What do I need to work on after that, that I can direct sow? What things that I'm going to have to work on and try to make plant starts with? And then things, you know, later on in the summer, okay? I also put some lemon seeds down here just because I have some lemon seeds. I'm going to start some more lemon uh, trees from that. And I have some muscadine that uh, I'm going to start in some winter sowing jugs to see if I can get any muscadine to grow. Now, then I switched over and here are my the seeds for my fall. Now I had, this was the first year that I've ever grown a fall garden and I only grew like uh, Swiss chard, some broccoli and some kale. My broccoli is doing wonderful. At, oh, and cabbage. And uh, my broccoli is doing wonderful. My cabbage is doing wonderful. My Swiss chard did wonderful up until October. We had a really, we had a freeze in early October here in Texas, which is unheard of. So if I would have covered those, those probably would have would have lasted. But I didn't. And so, because that was this my first time to do a fall garden. But it did so well that I want to try to... Uh, expound on that and do better at that for fall. So for fall, I could once again grow Swiss chard, lettuce, uh, radishes, peas, some spinach, parsley, cilantro. You can grow cilantro in the summertime, but it bolts really easily. Carrots, um, I just don't have a lot of room in my garden, so I'm going to try to do some carrots in the fall. I'm not, I've tried carrots before. I'm not real good at carrots. And then, of course, cabbage, cauliflower, and, some, and more broccoli. So this is kind of how I have my working list of what I'm going to grow. Now, then I took, I kind of organized my seeds. Okay, so like I put all the, the seeds that I'm going to grow that in the springtime or in the in one package so that when I go to get my seeds, I'm not having to dig through all these seeds. I can just pull out these seeds right here and these are the ones that I'm gonna grow. And these are um, early, like the Swiss chard, the lettuce, spinach, um, the uh, parsley, and peas. I probably won't grow any peas this year, but just I had them. So, so that's kind of, I, I set those aside. And then, these are the fall, the ones that I'm going to grow in the fall, even though some of these I can grow in the fall as well, but I separated them out. So cilantro, my pumpkins, um, I'm sorry, my carrots, my uh, and things like that. Those were things for sure I was going to grow in the fall. So then I put those in a baggie so that I just wasn't having to go through all these seed packages every time I looked for a seed. Now, then I had, um, these are all my tomatoes and my peppers. These are all my tomato and pepper seeds. And these are the ones I'm going to have to work on starting uh, some starts of, some plants of. So I've got all these kind of 
clipped together. And then uh, things that I'm going to direct sow, but a little bit later on in summer, my pumpkins and cantaloupe. And then uh, other things that I'm just going to, the other things that I was going to direct sow, I kind of ran out. I needed to get a baggie, but I didn't get them for that, which are my, my green beans, my cucumbers, my squash, my zucchini, all those I can direct direct so let's see what else oh and uh and so i've got those separated and then of course my late plants which is my okra they like the heat and my peas they like heat so those are a little bit later later on plants so so i got all these seeds organized and that will help me so that i'm not so crazy and i'm not so overwhelmed and i'm not having to dig through all of these packages of seeds when i go to plant them that i will have them kind of organized in here in my little tin now the other thing i have to do for my garden is kind of decide where i want to plant now, this, this is one thing that I will say as a new gardener, what you will do is you will buy seeds and you'll go to the this uh, nursery and that nursery and you'll buy all sorts of plants and then you come home and you're like, okay, where am I going to put all this? So, after a little while, you kind of get where you're not so crazy about all that stuff. You don't get so excited. And this year, I have so many seeds uh, and because I've retired, I am going to try to not buy starts from a nursery. I'm going to try to make get my own starts, do my own thing, and use up some of these seeds. Because I've spent money on these seeds that I haven't even, some of them I haven't even used. And that's just wasteful. And so for me... That's one of my goals this year is to start plants for, my, for myself and not buy starts from the nursery. But now listen, if you're a new gardener and you are just trying to learn one thing at a time, you're just trying to get your garden going and be successful at something, don't, don't beat yourself up because you, have, you don't start your own plants from seed. Go to the nursery if you can afford to do that and you can do that. Um, buy your starch from a garden center. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That It can be, you know, I've done that plenty of times. Last year, I just, you know, for my fall garden, I was going to try to get some plants started. And I just ran out of time and I broke my arm. So, you know, things happen in life. Don't beat yourself up. This is supposed to be fun. This is not supposed to be so stressful. So, you know, if you, if that's not your thing, starting seeds you know plants from seed and you don't have the room and the facilities for that don't worry about that don't beat yourself up over that just have a good fun time in your garden so the next thing that i have to do is i have to make i've made a master plan of my garden and i hope I, you can see this now this is pretty much a kind of very shrunk down very condensed space of what my garden looks like uh so here is and I also have kind of put the directions for y'all. This is the just the edge of my greenhouse, and it's on. This is the west side, uh, and then this is, of course, the east, and this is the north, and this is the south. All right. So this is how my garden set up. I have uh, tubs that I plant in, and then I have some raised beds. Okay. So all my garden pretty much is a raised bed garden. My husband has an area that he plants cantaloupe and things like that down. And I have another small area that I plant my pumpkins in that's in the ground. But most of my stuff is in a raised bed garden. So I have what we call here in the South, they're, they're mineral tubs that they feed uh, this mineral. It's usually a molasses mixture to cattle in the winter time. And when it's done, there is a, a tub that's left over. And I have, through the years, I have gleaned these tubs and filled them with compost and everything. And I refurbish these every year, uh, not with brand new soil, but I, you know, add to it. But over the years, I have, like, I think I counted it the other day, I, had, I have like 85 uh, of these tubs. And then I have two areas of, well, a couple of areas of raised bed gardens. So, uh, so each one of these circles is a tub, okay? So, I, I have them bunched together. They're 
uh, side by side, two of them, and then there's a row for my husband to be able to mow, and then they're two together, and then they mow, and, but, but I have it kind of really condensed down. All right, so I look at my garden plan from last year because I had one, and this is, this is my first year to do this big piece of paper like this. Uh, last year I did it inside this little notebook, but it was kind of hard to read um, and keep up with and write on. So uh, I didn't do it like that this year. This was this was last year, just in this in my little book. But I decided to do it this way this year. So I wrote down all the plants that I'm going to do. And like uh, here, I'm going to have uh, cucumbers and I'm going to put a trellis in between these these uh, pots and then I'm going to do uh, my bush beans and I'm going to do onions and then when my onions come out I'm going to plant some pumpkins in there and then uh, I've already got garlic in here this is a bed that's uh, I have asparagus plants in here they were pretty new um, plants that I put in last year and just at the front I've got a little bit of space at the front of them I'm going to put in some more onions right there and then this one, uh, this is going to be all pepper plants, different kinds, but it's, you know, just all my pepper plants. And then this is going to be some tomato plants. And um, I'm either going to have a trellis through here uh, that I can um, tie my tomato plants to, or also I have tomato cages. Um so one or the other, but I think I'm going to do a trellis this year, get my husband to help me with that. And then this one is going to be peas. I grow peas in my tubs. Anything you grow in the ground, you can grow in these tubs. I do, I do well with it. And then uh, this one is going to be zucchini and squash. And then this one's going to be some more tomato plants. And then with my tomato plants, I always plant marigolds. So I didn't put that over there, but I always plant some marigolds with my tomato plants. And then I'm going to have some herbs out here. These are some big old uh, cattle trough tubs that I plant. I'm going to put herbs in there. I'm going to put some basil in this tub. I have blue bonnets in this one. We're from Texas, so we have to have our blue bonnets. And then this one is going to be, this is kind of a shady area, especially right here because I have a big tree right here. So this is a little bit shadier area of my garden. And so this year I decided to plant those, those spring, early spring plants. And especially since they're maybe in the sun, in the shade, might go a little bit longer in, in my garden because they're in a little shaded area. Uh, you know, a little bit shaded. So this is going to be uh, four tubs of Swiss chard. Four tubs of spinach, a, a tub of parsley, and a tub of, I can't see what that is, lettuce. So, that's that's what that's what I'm going to grow. And then, um, then and the other, I have another little garden. It's I call it the, my postage stamp garden. Um, this is along a fence line, and I already have garlic planted in these. This is on the west side. Um, and so, because it gets west afternoon sun, I'm going to plant my okra in there after I pull up my garden, my garlic. And that'll be a really good spot for that because they like the heat and they come, you don't plant those in Texas till a little bit later. And my garlic should be out by the time I'm ready to plant my okra. And then this is kind of just a small little uh, in ground garden. Sometimes I don't plant anything in it and it's just open uh, ground that's covered with compost. Or this year uh, and last year I planted, uh, last year I had some volunteer pumpkins come up in there uh, that I had, you know, some pumpkins that I had just thrown in there to compost and they ended up seeding self-seeding and i had pumpkins so i think i'm going to do that again i'll grow some more pumpkins or you know i might grow some other things but this is not a space this was actually my first garden but i don't use it anymore because it's not really a great spot it was in the like i say it gets hardly any morning sun it gets all afternoon west sun you know it's just one of those things that you do I picked a convenient space, but I didn't pick a great space for a garden, but I still use it because we've cultivated it over the years. So that is my garden plan, and I'm just going to keep it really simple this year. The things that I really uh, use and grow and uh, that we eat, and 
hopefully now I don't have potatoes in here I have some five gallon buckets that I'm gonna probably grow potatoes in some five gallon buckets so that I can just empty them out when they're done and instead of having to dig the potatoes I can just empty them out so I think that's what I'm gonna do and then I have a spot over here that I can just stack up those five gallon buckets uh, my husband, this area is not quite, not so condensed, but he likes to be able to get, uh, get the tractor through and all, and, and mow and all that kind of throw. So he kind of likes me to have some open lanes, uh, even in my garden so that, um, you know, he can get through with his tractor and things like that. So that's kind of my garden plan. And this is, this is what I suggest you do, especially even if you're a first time gardener, this will help you a lot. This will help you kind of stay on track and know how much you need to, how many plants you need to have, how much space you have to work. This is a, this is a really good thing. So I would suggest you do that. Now for Texas, you know, uh, one of the th resources, I, I suggest you get some resources and I have some lots of different resources because i'm a master gardener one of the things the master gardener does is they support um they encourage us to get this texas gardener magazine but i'm sure every state probably has a magazine that your state produces that is really good for your gardening for your state and i noticed in this one this is the one for uh, january february it talks about the things that you need to be planting or working on or starting the seeds of of what it's a good checklist for what you need for january february so i've already kind of gone through this and sure enough this matched up to what my 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 master plan had this is pretty much matched up to that so that was a this is a good resource if you have anything in your state try to find something like this this was not very expensive and something else i haven't gotten the 2020 calendar but this is a really good i really liked this this is a calendar that actually tells you about your moon cycles and when to plant things in your area and it even breaks texas down into you know we i am in zone eight uh b and but texas breaks it down even into zones of texas and so it breaks it down when you should be planting stuff per zone of texas so this is a really good uh resource for you if you uh need some help in figuring out when to when to plant things and it also talks it gives you recommended um favorite things varieties that are good for our state because we or texas has a a different cycle you know you can have different weather all over the state of texas so this gives you the varieties that are good for texas now something else that i used and that i have and it is a really good resource and i'm not sponsored by any of these things here is clyde's garden planner it's kind of used kind of like a slide rule and it has a summer and a fall side but you you figure out when your last your frost date is. You can go on web online and find out when your last frost date is, and you line this red line up to your frost date, and then it will tell you when you should plant things and when you when you direct sow things or when you start your 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 plant your plant starts. And so you can here it is. It says indoor sow indoor seeding dates. Uh, in first outdoor planting dates <clears throat> so it has lots of different things in here it's a really good <coughs> excuse me it's a really good resource for you and it does um, spring and fall so it's not very expensive I think you know like I say I'm not sponsored by Clyde by any means but uh, you know I think it was like less than Right at maybe ten dollars, eight dollars, something like that. But this is a really good thing that I th that you might need to get too if you're a first time gardener and need some information. Because I grew up, my grandmother had always had a garden, but I was young, and so I didn't grow up with my parent, you know, automatically knowing at what time of the year that I needed to plant things. Um, I knew, of course, that okra and things like that liked a lot of heat, but I mean, just a lot of specifics like when you plant potatoes and all that stuff. Like, I didn't have all those little 
sayings that people have about, you know, not planting potatoes till, you know, sometimes they say, uh, you know, Valentine's Day, you plant this and, you know, uh, St. Patrick's Day, you plant this. I didn't grow up with that, so I had to learn this. I'm that one generation away from a gardening family. My my family did not garden. My mother grew up gardening and having to garden to, to survive, and my daddy did. And so they they didn't want any part of that. That was, you know, they they got out of that. But I do remember my grandmother gardening and, and canning and and you know shelling peas we i did all that i helped her with that my parents helped her with that but they themselves did not do that in our household so i'm that one generation away and i i'm get my grandbaby in there to help me because if we don't do this all this is going to be lost it's just going to be so lost if we don't start getting our children in knowing where their food comes from and i will tell you that you know your kids if you get them involved now they will eat something that they've grown way faster than they would if you just you know got it from the grocery store because they know that they they grew that so they want to taste it so that is my organizational video on gardening and um it's like i say when i start making doing my starts and all that kind of stuff i'll get y'all involved and let y'all see what i'm going to do and like i say i'm no expert i am not an expert in this this is just the trial and errors that i've done to try to get myself organized for angela for our homestead the chicken coop this is what I had to do to get myself organized and to know what I needed to do. And, you know, one of the things that's a big joke in our family, my husband, oh, he loves peppers. He wants hundreds of pepper plants. Well, I can't plant hundreds of pepper plants out there. And really and truly, folks, you don't need, you know, 10 jalapeno pepper plants. And that's what I did. Those are the mistakes I made when we first started gardening. And now I, I usually limit my son and my husband to you know all those jalapeno peppers all those kind of things that they banana peppers all that they want uh tabasco peppers all those hot peppers not the sweet peppers the hot pe I, I limit them to like a six pack because if i don't i'll have jalapeno peppers out the wazoo and i don't need all those jalapeno peppers it's just a waste of my garden space and so i have to kind of reel him back in when we go shopping at the at the nurseries to not go crazy in the over at the peppers but you know that's just one of those things but hopefully this year starting my own seeds and stuff we won't have to deal with that so much i'll have kind of have, have him reeled in already but thank y'all for watching thank y'all for coming to visit with me and uh we will be able to share this spring and summer garden season it, lord willing in the creek don't rise we'll get this done so thanks for watching and visiting with me and i'll talk to you later bye bye